Hello everyone! Today we want to test the capabilities of a powerful blue laser. And the main goal will be to find out what happens if you hit a weapon cartridge with it. Disclaimer: The blue laser is pretty unsafe. It is very important to protect the organs of vision while working with the device. Therefore, we will do everything in red glasses. Such glasses do not let dangerous blue and ultraviolet radiation through, completely blocking the laser beam. But the glasses suffer quite well when there is a direct hit. It is better to begin with checking the burning ability of a laser with on black objects. This is due to the fact that black color absorbs the maximum amount of light. We take a black ball and fix it on a rope. When the laser is pointed, the ball burns almost instantly. But it's at close range. It's possible to burst the balloon by directing the laser from a 15-meter distance, but you need to prepare for this. The laser, like any directional light source, is difficult to hold manually without any oscillation. Therefore, we fix it on a tripod beforehand. But what if we try to do the same with a transparent ball? It is impossible to burst it in this way. Due to its transparency, it only passes the beam through itself and doesn't absorb it like a black ball. Moreover, some of the light from the laser is also scattered due to its spherical shape. Let's move on to things with completely different physical indicators. Our first task is to check the power of the laser on a black drink. For its purpose, a bottle of Pepsi is just perfect. We install it on a stand and proceed to heat with the laser. But no matter how much we heat the bottle and how far from it the beam is, nothing happens to it. The bottle doesn't even get hot. The thing is that it's transparent and passes the laser through itself. Of course, the laser power is spent on heating the drink inside in such conditions. As there is a large volume of it and the light of the laser comes only to one point, boiling Pepsi is an unreal task. So, it's time to use a life hack that should solve all the related problems. Let's take a marker and draw a black dot on the label. It is quite another thing. Directing the beam at a black dot, the label in its place almost immediately begins to smoke, which means that the laser melts it. And after a couple of minutes, the tightness of the bottle is broken and the first drop appears. The laser is able to burn a hole, so the task is completed. Moreover, a thin steam of Pepsi is coming out of the place of burning. It is barely noticeable and can be compared with the thickness of a match. Although a hair of Hypercoon would be a more suitable size. Moreover, the trickle is even smaller than the hair. Now, let's try the laser on the gas canister. It doesn't have any black spots. There is only red, yellow and blue. So, before we check the action of the laser, we need to find out how it interacts with these colors. We have red, yellow and blue balloons. Let's lay them out in front of the tripod on which the laser is located and begin to direct them in turn at the balls. We have noticed much difference and all the balls have burst almost immediately. So, it doesn't matter at all for the laser whether it is blue, red or yellow. As soon as we direct the laser on the canister, it immediately begins to glow green and blue. And after a few moments, the gas canister begins to smoke. This proves that if an object is opaque, then it doesn't matter what color it is, the laser will burn it. Every second the smoke is getting more and more. But the action hasn't really happened. A hole has appeared in the canister from which the gas begins to flow, but we haven't managed to light it some gas and no fire. This won't do. Time to use our propane tank. We'll fill a transparent balloon with it and see what happens. It has been put into the ball beforehand. Point the laser at the match. 
And in fact, everything has worked out as it should, but the match hasn't flared. Most likely, this is due to the airless space inside the balloon. But we will not despair and slightly change the conditions of the experiment. Let's redo our experiment, but this time the match will be located in the immediate vicinity of the balloon. And again a miss! The match lights and the fire has burnt a hole in the ball, but instead of igniting, the gas has extinguished the burning match. Now it's time to move on to ammo, and we'll start with Flabeyer's pattern. At first glance, it seems small and quite harmless, but it is not the case. We fix the cartridge in a wise for safety's sake. We try to achieve detonation of the cartridge with the laser. But no matter how much we heat Flubber's cartridge with a laser, we have got nothing. As you know, its projectile differs from others because it doesn't contain gunpowder and the bullet is moved by a special capsule composition. So, you need to change the initial conditions. We take the cartridge out of the vise and turn it with the capsule. It is the right point where the laser is going to shine. Five minutes has passed and nothing has happened again. It's time to tint the capsule a little with a black marker, and the laser is placed as close as possible. We begin to heat the cartridge. And this time it really does detonate. And how? In spite of our expectations, the bullet and the cartridge case haven't flown far from each other. The crumpled cartridge case remains on the stand and the bullet flows 30 centimeters apart, probably. And this is the moment of truth. It's time for a 5.45 caliber gun cartridge. The difference with Flaubert's cartridge is extremely noticeable, isn't it? This means that the detonation will be much stronger. Once again, I would like to remain that you mustn't repeat what is about to happen under no circumstances. We put the cartridge into the vise and paint the capsule with a black marker. According to the past experience, we will also hit it at close range. The laser has shown for 15 minutes, because that's how long it takes before the batteries are completely discharged if they are 100% charged. But nothing has happened. So, we charge the batteries again to 100%, and let's check whether it is possible to ignite gunpowder with the help of a laser. And it really works! The gunpowder ignites so well that there is some smoke under the ceiling of the hangar. So we can continue the experiment. But this time we will hit the cartridge from the very side where the gunpowder is located. We put it on the stand and turn it sideways to the laser. And… Again, the laser is discharged. But we haven't seen any expected effect. Apparently, this is due to the fact that all the heat the laser emits is dissipated due to the larger size of the cartridge compared to the Flaubert patron. But anyway, that's the experiment. That's it for today. Bye-bye!